Hello, this is Jason at Geyser Wood Turner bringing to you another wood turning video. Welcome to my shop. For today's project, I have a small blank of walnut that I want to turn into a tortilla rolling pin. So let's have some fun on the wood lathe. Okay, so we're going to start out by putting a couple lines corner to corner to mark our center. I actually do this four times because not every piece is square. So you'll do that on both sides. And then you're ready to mount it between centers. And this piece will be turned completely between centers. You shouldn't need a chuck or anything like that. It... Bring up the tailstock, lock it in place. And we're ready to adjust our tool rest. And always give it a little spin before you start to make sure your wood blank or anything else isn't going to hit your tool rest. Remember to wear a face shield as we get started. And start the lathe slow and bring it up to speed while you're standing out of the way. Okay, with your spindle rough and gouge, you're gonna pay attention to that bevel on the end. You're gonna want that to rest on your piece of wood. You'll drop your hand and slowly raise the handle until you get a cut and keep that angle by locking it into your hip. And then you'll just want to slowly turn away the corners of the material. Make sure your tool rest is good and tight. You can tell that slipped on me just a little bit. And just keep working your way down from high to low. In this case, I'm going for a perfect cylinder. And you'll notice that I move my whole body not just the tool. Gives you a lot more control. And always just take a little at a time nibbling away at the wood. Okay, check it for round and there's still a flat spot in it on that side that I can feel. So I'm going to take a little bit more material and we'll check it again. It's still there, so I'm going to take a look and see where it's at. see right there across the top just on one side so I'll know to take more material on that side and this rolling pin is not going to have any handles and 
and the sides of it will be flat, so you can shape it how you like. Okay, we're going to give it a check, and it looks like that's good. Okay, we're going to switch to the top view and set our calipers so we know that our thickness is consistent all the way across the barrel. So I'm going to set the calipers on one end, that'll be the thinnest end. Make sure it slips through, and I have no slip here and no slip here. So I know I'm going to have to remove a little bit of material. I want to make that match the side that it slips through on. So I'm going to continue on with the spindle roughing gouge and just remove a little material at a time. And we'll give it a check with the calipers. It slips there and there just perfect. Okay, so we're going to switch to the skew chisel and do a planing cut. And that's going to ride a little bit higher on your piece of wood. So I'm going to move the tool rest up just a little bit. This cut's easier to do if you can do it in a comfortable position. Okay, and with very light pressure and that bevel riding on the top of the wood at an angle, we'll start to make our cut with really light pressure. And you'll notice that the shavings are coming off on the bottom third of the skew or the heel of the skew. And just light and slow all the way across is going to give you a good, consistent, even cut. Okay, we're going to come from the other direction. And I switched hands on this because it's easier for me. Try to teach myself to become ambidextrous. Just make sure that bevel is riding on the piece of wood and that the cut's coming off where you want. If not, adjust. And don't let that bevel ride off the end. You'll want to lift up before you get to the end. Take just a little amount off because we've already set our depth. Okay, at this point I'm going to mark a center line. And it took me just a minute to do the math in my head. Okay, and we'll spin that up, and I can still see where the center line is. I'll just define that with the lathe spinning. Okay, and then I'm going to mark how long I want the barrel of a rolling pin to be. And I'm making it 10 inches overall, so 5 inches from the center line. And our blank was about 11 inches to start with, so it's going to take about a half inch off of each end. 
So we'll define that pencil line. On both sides. And we can darken them with the lathe spinning. Okay, so we're going to move to the parting tool to define the ends. I'm going to drop the tool rest a little bit so that I can have that parting tool be on the center line. And I'll move it back just a little bit so I'm on the bar of the parting tool. And I just want to nibble away this material to define where the end of my rolling pin is going to be. We're just going to make that flat. If you want, you can round it a little bit more. Um, doesn't really matter. As long as your barrel is consistent. So I'll just nibble away at it till I get to the line, taking small cuts. Last cut up against the lines probably should be the smallest. It's more like a finished cut and that will help prevent tear out on the end grain. And the same on the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to round over the edges to make them not so sharp. And I'm using a 3-8 spindle gouge. And I start with the flute pointed straight up and then I roll it over to the side and I point that bevel in the direction that I want the cut to go. So you can see I'm just taking little cuts at a time. Don't want this rounded over very much but you can do it how you like. You have to pay attention to how you present the tool to the workpiece. As you see, I just slipped up and tried to thread the end. Now that I'm paying more attention, I'm going to clean that up. Okay, just checking that I removed all the marks that I just put in there. So this one will round just a little bit more. I'll go back to the other side and make it match so that it's symmetrical. Okay, now it's time to sand the barrel. We're going to start with a 120 grit and keep it moving as we move across the barrel and remove any of the tool marks that we have in there. I'm going to reverse the direction of the lathe and that'll help to sand the grain a different direction and then I'll move laterally along the grain and that'll help remove any sandy scratches and I'll do that every time between 
grits and I, on this one I did a 120 grit, 220 grit, 320 grit and then I moved to a 400 grit. Okay, and the next thing I like to do is pick up some shavings and rub that onto the wood while the lathe's spinning and you'll see how it gets shiny across the top there. It's burnishing the wood and making a really smooth shiny finish on it. Okay, and now it's time to part it off of the lathe. I'm not going to part it all the way off. I'm just going to take the thin parting tool and remove some of the material so that I can cut it off with a saw. And the reason I don't want it to come off of there is because I spent a lot of time on that outside finish on the barrel and I don't want any dents or dings in it. Walnut is pretty soft and that can likely happen. So we'll just take that parting tool and get it down really thin and do the same on the other side. I usually start on the tailstock side because it gives me wood to support the turning over on the headstock side because that's, that's the drive side. And I got this down to where it was a quarter of an inch or less. And something that I can easily cut off with a saw. Okay, and that's ready to come off the lathe. Okay, and I'm cutting the wood away with a bandsaw, but you can cut that waste wood away with a handsaw or any other saw that you feel comfortable in using. And the trick is to get it as close to the end without touching the end with the saw. This is my original lathe that I almost always use as a dedicated sander now. There's an 80 grit disc on that wheel and we'll clean up the ends and then use a random orbital sander to clean it up a little bit more with some finer grits of sandpaper. Now that everything's smoothed up we're going to apply some mineral oil for our finish. And the reason I like mineral oil is it's food safe and it's readily available. You can buy it at most pharmacies. I bought mine at the Walmart pharmacy. And just slather it on there and wipe off all the excess. Pretty easy process.
Okay, one additional step we're going to take in the finish is to apply some beeswax. And I've got a little buffer in the lathe, and you just want to run it fast enough to get enough heat to melt it. And put that all over the rolling pin, and it'll leave some little white lines on it. That's okay, we'll wipe those off later. Okay, when you're all done applying the beeswax, just wipe it down with a clean towel. It's going to take some friction to get it off of there, but it'll leave a nice, consistent, smooth, good feeling to the touch finish. I had a lot of fun working on this project today with you. I think using this rolling pin is going to be awesome. You should try making one. I'm having fun, so I'm going to keep making these videos until you tell me to stop. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time and have a good day turning in your shop.